Hi, how are you today? We now move on to part two of chapter 12, and this is called the directional policy matrix. When we looked at the product market portfolio, there were just two factors which determined strategic location. These were relative market share and market growth rate. Now, when many people came to employ this, they said, this isn't enough. It's not sufficient, and furthermore, it may not be correct because we may well have low RMS products or businesses, which are winners, which are habitually successful. And it might also be the case that some low growth markets are superior to high growth markets. For example, computers versus soap. So here is the original product market portfolio, and we can see there are two axes there relative market share and market growth rate. And many people and companies said, we need, we need something more comprehensive than just those two measures. So they replaced relative market share with the business position. And they replaced market growth rates with the business sector prospects. Leading the sort of uh, the, 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 the sort of challenge to BCG were companies such as GE and Shell, and they said that business position in the case of GE anyway could be measured by the competitive strength of the firm, and there are some measures there, and its market position. And for any business, we can work out its business position by using indices such as its competitive position its asset utilization, etc., etc. And furthermore, we can take those and list them as the factors and attach to each of them an importance and a strength and get an overall score. Let me show you how. So here is a hypothetical uh, business position where we have market share, product quality, etc., etc. Each factor is accorded an importance, with five being the most important and one being the least important. And in addition to that, each factor is accorded a strength or a weight, where minus five is the worst and plus five is the best, with the other scores being somewhere in between. And we can then multiply those two factors together so that we get minus 20 on the first line and you can go down them and they sum to minus 60. So we can then work that out as a percentage where if on the left hand side we take the maximum possible score, which in this case is 130, we take our actual score, which in this case is minus 60, which gives us an overall score of minus 46.1%. We can do a similar thing in terms of the market, the industry attractiveness and the GE one where market size and you can read them there and typical ones that we could use would be market factors, competitive factors, etc, etc. It's not delineated what the factors should be. You decide them in relation to your own particular company. And once again, as before, we can put these in the form of a table. We can then attach a strength and a weight to them. We can sum that and get a score. And in this case, our score is positive. It is plus 47 and our maximum score is 135, which gives us an actual percentage score of 34.8%. We can take a matrix that's a bit like the PMP, except we have put it into nine squares rather than four and we can put a score going from minus 100 to plus 100 to work out the business position so that the blue arrows show you the center is zero and it's positive on the left hand side and negative on the right hand side. And similarly, we can put scores for business sector prospects. And once again, it's positive for the top half and negative for the bottom half. And we can then insert the position that we looked at a moment or two ago, which is 46, minus 46.1 and 34.8. And we can uh, also include a circle whose area is proportional to the annual sales in the same way as the uh, product market portfolio. And there we have it. 
that this product A is has a weak business position, but it's in quite a good market. We can take this a little further and say each of these squares represents a strategy that should be followed. And the first one is double or quit, try harder, leader, leader stroke growth, growth stroke custodial, phased withdrawal, cash generator, phased withdrawal, and a divest. And you should be able to see that if we take the double or quit, the leader, the cash generator, and the divest, that is the problem child, the star, the cash cow, and the dog in BCG. And furthermore, it suggested that these lines are much too straight, and it's softer than that. These are areas rather than uh, clearly defined shapes. So we have to be quite flexible in our interpretation of it. So these are the interpretation of each uh, cell, the leader, the leader stroke growth, the cash generator. We also have next try harder, growth stroke custodial, phased withdrawal, and the final ones are double or quit, phased withdrawal, or divest. We also have in the uh, DPM similar sort of ideal movements where there are the ideal movements of products, as you can see, and here is the ideal movement of cash to fund the products of the future. Just let me say a little about relating a business's position, the behavioral types, and the anticipated results. For invest, stroke, grow type uh, sales, we need entrepreneurs. Current results are likely to be lowish, but the future benefits are likely to be high. And if we just go to the last one, about harvest, divest, the ability to be solid, current results should be quite high, and future benefits should be low. Let me just say a few words on comparing the two techniques. Product market portfolio, really great, so simple, two factors. We get objective and precise measures and we can plot it consistently year on year. And we have the things against it. It's naive, it's too simple. There are different opinions on relative market share. There may be great variations. In terms of the, product, uh, the directional policy matrix, in favour of it, it accommodates many, many more factors. It's much more comprehensive and it's a great device for fostering debate. But it's against that. It's much more subjective. My conclusions are, they're both great, really great, but their use depends upon particular circumstances. For example, if you have hard data and a clear objective, for example, shareholder returns, product market portfolio. If you've softer data, less precise, and you've many stakeholders, for example, co-ops, the public sector, probably the directional policy matrix. Why not have both? That's what I would do. So there's a little exercise for you to develop a directional policy matrix for your particular company. And it just reminds, for, remains for me to acknowledge the credits, which as usual is mostly Apple. And finally, to thank you for listening to this podcast and to wish you goodbye. Goodbye.